The margin of difference between the best and the worst brands of solar panels is shrinking every year, but there are still differences in specifications between brands that make certain panels better for certain situations. Let's start out with wattage. You may think that a higher wattage panel means that it's better, but this is not necessarily true. That panel could just be physically larger than the lower wattage panels, but actually is less efficient per unit area of the panel. And honestly, if you're a homeowner going solar, I would ignore the wattage rating of these panels and pay more attention to the other specifications denoted here. For specifications that you should pay attention to, first we have module efficiency. This is the percentage of the theoretical energy contained in sunlight that actually gets converted to usable electricity. A few years ago, anything above 20% was NASA level solar technology. But now we're seeing it pretty commonplace in the residential solar market. Having a high module efficiency is most important for homeowners that have a limited space on their roof, especially if the limited space is on the southern facing facets of your roof. A higher module efficiency is of course better, but you are typically paying a higher price for those extra gains. So expect a higher price per watt on panels with better module efficiency. Second, we have Temperature coefficient. All solar panels have reduced performance with increased temperature. Temperature coefficient is how much efficiency is lost per degree of temperature rise in degrees Celsius. For example, the 410 watt Panasonic panel will lose 0.26% for every degree Celsius that the temperature increases. Obviously, if you live in a hot climate, the spec is much more impactful than if you live in Maine, for example. Also keep in mind that in hot climates, we tend to use more electricity in the summers than in the winters because of air conditioning usage. So boosting the relative electricity production of your panels in the winter versus the summer is especially important. I also do wanna point out that even though panels have less efficiency in hot weather with a bad temperature coefficient panel, you will still produce more power in the summer than in the winter just because the sun is out for more hours in the day and it's at a higher angle in the sky. As usual, panels that have a better temperature coefficient will be more expensive. Moving on, we have the degradation warranty. It is totally normal for panels to lose some amount of their efficiency over time, but some panels degrade much faster than others. The degradation warranty will typically be shown in the form of a graph, and the standard is what percentage has degraded by year 25, which is the standard length of time solar panels are warrantied by the manufacturers. So in the case of these Panasonic panels, they have a, will have only degraded to 92% of their original efficiency by year 25. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. That's a great degradation rate. Modern solar panels are super reliable. They give 25 year warranties, but we often see panels that function for 35 years plus. As always, panels that have a better degradation rate will be more expensive. So a cheap panel with a worse degradation rate will pay for itself faster in the first few years, but in the long run will often yield a lower return on your original investment than better quality panels. So depending on what's important to you as a homeowner and what your goals are, this will determine what degradation rate works best for your situation. Solar panels are typically the most reliable and least likely piece of equipment to malfunction in a solar system. So to be honest, if I was a homeowner going solar, I wouldn't give too much weight to the specifics on the fine print in the manufacturer's warranty. By the way, I'm Saroosh. I'm an independent solar consultant. You can think of me kind of like a real estate agent, but for solar. And if you live in any of these states, I can get you competitive bids from multiple installers in your area guide you through what equipment to get, set you up with financing if you're going that route, and just confirm that solar makes sense for you to do in the first place. I effectively take the place of an in-house solar salesperson that is loyal to just one installer, but I don't have a horse in the race, and I'm in fact incentivized to pair you with the installer that will maximize your satisfaction. My services to you are free, as I get the same commission that is already baked into the price of the solar system, which would be given to the installer specific salesperson otherwise. If you'd like to book a call with me so I can answer your questions, get you proposals, and guide you through the process of going solar, there is a link in the description below to a Calendly booking so that we can set up a time for a call. Here are some additional considerations to give when choosing panels for your solar system. 
Number one is the panel brand reputation. A warranty is only as good as the likelihood that the company selling the warranty will be around for the term length of their warranty. Is Ming Li Solar going to be around in 25 years? Maybe. Will Panasonic be around in 25 years? Almost certainly. Number two is white versus black backing. According to the spec sheets of solar panels with white versus black backing, the specs are exactly the same. But in the real world, they do operate a little bit differently. The black backed solar panels are arguably more aesthetically appeasing, but they will absorb a little more heat from the sun than their white backed counterparts. In hot climates, this will decrease your panel's efficiencies just a tiny bit, which will certainly add up over the 25 year lifespan of panels. Conversely, if you live in a cold climate that gets snow often, the black backed panels will absorb a little more heat from the sun and melt snow from the panels just a little bit faster. Small considerations, but they're worth making note of. Okay, now that you know what specs you should be looking out for when buying a solar panel, how do you actually find those specs in the data sheets? We're going to do a little bit of a live demo here. I'm going to find them together in a couple of different options. By the way, in case you're wondering why I have a bunch of microscopes behind me, it's because I also own a microscope company. In case you're looking to buy a microscope, check us out, microsafari.org. Okay, so to start out with, let's start on the Panasonic Evervolt 410 and 400 watt models. Diving in here, we got the temperature coefficients are displayed right here. You'll note that there are three different temperature coefficients. Really, the only one that you need to pay attention to is this one labeled P max. P stands for power, and so this is the reduction of efficiency in the overall power of the panel. You don't need to worry about the other ones. So this one is negative 0.26% per degree Celsius. Very good. Next, we have the performance warranty. This is the degradation rate. So as you can see, at year 25, it'll be at 92% of the original efficiency. This is a linear degradation rate. So, you know, at year five, it is warranted for whatever this number is. That's probably 96 or 97%, as it's shown there. And then the module efficiency is the last one we're looking at. And that would be right here. You'll note that the, this, this data sheet is currently encompassing two different part numbers for different panels, the 410 and 400 watt versions. So since we're looking at the 410 version, it would be 22.2% efficient. Excellent. All right, let's move on to this one is the Qcells data sheet. They like to advertise their module efficiency. They actually put it at the very top. Thanks, guys. But let's actually find it in the specs down here. So something you'll note right off the bat is that they have two entirely different sections with seemingly duplicated specifications, but with different numbers. And it's because these are tested at different conditions. So this one is tested at standard test conditions, which is the most standardized ones that we're going to be looking at specs for on this Panasonic panel data sheet. These are all just at standard test conditions. They also have, at least in this one, it's referred to as uh, NMOT, which I believe is nominal module operating temperatures. So basically, standard test conditions are these panels are tested in a laboratory at kind of unrealistic, not real world conditions, whereas NMOT is trying to replicate what will actually happen in the real world. So when they are testing out a panel, they basically blast it uh, in a laboratory with a certain amount of irradiance from an artificial light source, and they also keep it at a very um, well-regulated temperature. So in those conditions, uh, this panel, for example, will produce 410 watts of output. But if you were to test that same panel at real world conditions, it would actually only be creating 307 watts of power. This is totally normal, and it's just how solar panels are spec'd out. So we're always going to be looking at standard test conditions when we're comparing panels to each other, just because that's the most apples-to-apples comparison. So in this case, we're looking at, let's just say, the 410-watt versions. So the efficiency would be 20.9%. Very good. The, The warranty for degradation rates is right here. Zoom in and see that at year 25, it is at 86% efficiency. This is also a linear degradation rate warranty. So at year, let's see here, that would be at year like eight, it's going to be at 95%, it looks like. And then the only other 
thing we're missing is the temperature coefficient, which is right here. This is at standard test conditions. All right, so here is the temperature coefficient for these panels. They ended up putting the unit as percent per degree Kelvin, which, you know, they're kind of being special snowflakes right now. Uh, degrees Kelvin is the same thing as degrees C. They're just at different rates. So room temperature for degrees C would be, I don't know what, 30 degrees, something like that. But in degrees Kelvin is, I don't know, 300 degrees or something like that. But they all, they both raise at the same rate. And so it's exactly the same unit in this case. Anyway, this one is negative, negative 0.34% per degree Kelvin rise in temperature. Next one we got here are the Sulfab Solar panels. So again, they have it as both standard test conditions and NOCT, which stands for nominal operating cell temperature, I believe. So looking at everything in S uh, standard test conditions, right here we have a, a, a module efficiency, boom, 21.4%. Very good. These are all really nice panels, by the way. Uh, we have that. And then we have, again, three different temperature coefficients. The one we really care about is this Pmax one. This is just the power overall. And then we have, so they actually gave their warranty, their degradation rate warranty as just numbers instead of a graph, which is fine. And it looks like at year 25, it's going to be 85% of the original efficiency. It also seems like they actually are giving a 30-year warranty on these panels. Hey, pretty great. Okay, that's it for the live demo. Bonus advice. I know I just spent the last 10 minutes explaining how to pick the right solar panels for your situation, but I actually think that there are other decisions that will be more impactful in the long term than the brand of your panels. For one, the brand and fundamental technology of the inverter that you use is far more important because inverters are much more likely to malfunction than the panels themselves. And the inverter technology will determine what kind of smart home integrations you can use like battery backups, smart home panels, EV charging, and more. Microinverters, at least for now, seem to be the most reliable technology, but DC-optimized string systems like Solar Edge are more efficient and have better home, battery, and smart home integrations, but have a higher risk profile due to the inverter being the single failure point in the system. Another decision I think is more important than the brand of panels is the installer and salesperson that you choose to work with. I don't like to poo-poo on salespeople. There are lots of very competent, highly knowledgeable, helpful solar salespeople, but there are definitely ones that are not so great. And whether they don't know what they are talking about or will just try and convince you that a specific panel, inverter, or financing option is the best solution for you because that's the standard company sells is unclear. The job of a solar salesperson is to guide you through the process and help you make decisions that will impact a solar system that's going to be around for the next 25 years. Similarly, the install company is going to hold some of the warranties for the system. And although the warranties of the equipment itself from the original equipment manufacturers is more important, the ability for the install company to remedy problems that could come up in the first couple years of the system is super important. It's a general rule of thumb, similar to how a new car is more likely to malfunction in the first thousand miles, a solar system is much more likely to malfunction in the first year of use. Problems typically show themselves quickly, and the longer that a system has been running without issue, the more likely it is to continue functioning properly through its entire lifespan. Also, if you're getting financing, matching the terms that you choose for the loan to your overall financial strategy will impact the monetary benefit of going solar far, far more than getting one brand of solar panel over another. The most common loans in the solar industry are super low interest rate loans that have a dealer fee attached to them. This works out great in solar because the entire cost of the solar system, including the dealer fee, can be applied to the federal solar tax credit. This style of financing really is just some accounting reshuffling to make the most of the tax credits. But this works out really, really well if you only want to pay the minimum monthly payment on the loan and take the full 25 years to pay it off. The min this minimum loan payment typically takes the place of your electric bill and is, or I should say, should be lower than your current electric bill if you're going solar, sometimes up to half. 
That being said, if you want to pay off the loan sooner, let's say in one year after you get the system, you will actually want to choose a loan that has a higher interest rate but a lower dealer fee or no dealer fee at all. You'll end up saving money in this case because the higher interest rate doesn't have time to compound and you aren't paying for the dealer fee. This is a very simplified explanation of solar financing and is worth watching a full video about if you are planning to finance your system. Another hot tip is that matching the placement of the panels on your roof to your lifestyle and electrical usage characteristics will greatly impact the benefits of going solar. For example, if you have a plug-in hybrid and always plug it in when you get home from work at 5.30 p.m., choosing to place panels on the southwestern facing roof of your house so that you're generating power at the same time that you are using that power will be more financially worthwhile than placing them on the southeastern facing roof, which technically gets more sunlight over the course of the day, assuming that you are not on a net metering plan with your utility. If you are on a net metering plan, you got lucky. Those are amazing. There is so much nuance when it comes to designing a solar system to maximize the benefit for homeowners, but hopefully your solar salesperson will guide you through all of this. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful, and if you'd like to schedule a free call with me, check the information in the description. Bye!